Hey guys, thanks for joining us again. My name is Chris. And I'm Lindsay. And we're called to wander. You know that if you've been following us for a while, you also know we live mostly full-time on the road. We've been off the road doing a remodel. It's been a lot of fun, and now we're gearing up to get back out on the road. And I tell you what, it's reminding me of all the things that are challenges of living on the road. So that's what we're gonna talk about really quickly with you, are the top things that are difficult challenges, struggles that we have while living full-time in our RV on the road. The most difficult thing about living on the road full-time is... Hey. What are you doing? <laughs> no surprise there. If you live all by yourself on the road, you probably have no complaints about that, uh, of course. But when you live with a spouse and maybe even some kids, um, you definitely have challenges. And we won't get into the details of those challenges because I would like to remain married into our eighth year. Uh, however, we do know there's challenges. Living in a small space, I think, is really hard in general. And then you throw somebody else in there that you love to death, but we all know. But you get on each other's nerves, it happens. <laughs> not often, but it happens. And that's just how it is. So um, challenge number one is that closeness together all the time. We're married, we're best friends, we see each other all the time. We work together. We work together, we own a business together. Yeah. It's always us, 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 and so that, that becomes a challenge. So how do we overcome that challenge? I take the dog for walks, that's a big thing for me. <laughs> I like to get the dogs out and go see and do something that's just totally off keel. We have to also remember date nights. Mm -hmm. It's a great way of just keeping things romantic enough and not involve work in that and as not, well. Exactly. Which is, can be hard. It's really hard <laughs> because that is yeah. our life right now. Work and travel is the same thing for us. You know, just, just being kind. Um, knowing, I know I'm gonna lose every fight. So guys, you should probably have that mentality. I'm gonna lose every fight. So as soon as I get all riled up, I realize I'm gonna lose. And then I just try to temper down. <laughs> right. But. Having safe spaces is another thing you can do for me. A safe space is taking the, the dogs for a walk, just getting out of the RV. Lindsay likes to paddleboard when we're out in a place. She'll just disappear and I'll worry about her being gone for like three or four hours. And <laughs> she's just off looking at fish and yeah, chasing butterflies. A, yeah. And you know, so <laughs> having that outlet is a great way. Photography. Photography. Outlets, yeah. It's a great way to be able to not defer the tension, but to just kind of squash it, to leave it be and then, and then come back later. So that is definitely, I would say, the biggest challenge of being on the road is living full time in a small space mm -hmm. with a, spar a spouse or a partner or somebody you care about. The next thing on our list is travel logistics finding places uh, to camp ahead of time, uh, where we're going to go next. Food. Uh, food. What are we going to eat for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast? Food. <laughs> food. Uh, food. 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 Food's my biggest travel logistic. Is that, that's a travel logistic. <laughs> we are constantly on the move. We have been. Our goal in this leg of our journey is going to be to slow down quite a bit once we get it back out west. Um, however, when you are traveling regularly every couple days or every day, finding a place to camp is like the number one logistic issue. You can always find food. I love food. It's pretty obvious, but um, we've always got food that I can eat. But when it comes to where are we going to stay? Are we going to stay in a Walmart parking lot or a Cracker Barrel parking lot? Are we going to stay? Are we going to be able to get a campsite in that national park where we want to stay, but we didn't call ahead and can't make reservations and it's walk up first availability? Yeah. Um, boondocking, so. Our tanks are full. Where are we going to dump them? Uh, we haven't showered in days and in our old truck camper showering was a hassle. Now this will be different. But are we going to stay in a campground and spend the money for a campground and then have awesome hot water for a shower? You know, there's all kinds of daily logistical things when you're traveling full time on the road. If you're not going from one place for, for a month to the next place for a mm -hmm. month. Which um, we don't really do. I don't. know there are a lot of full-time RVers that do that. And so you don't have that worry of moving and you probably have places in advance picked out. Yeah. But for us... It's definitely, definitely a challenge. So we overcome that by doing a little bit of planning. But as you know, we are called to wander, not called to arrive. And so with the wandering, we very rarely, if ever, make reservations. But that's obviously a way that you can um, kind of get rid of some of that anxiety is to say, look, we're gonna to go to this place, we're gonna stay for a week, like it, hate it, doesn't matter, we're gonna to commit to being there, 
and that way at least you get a break from having to think through the logistics of course you have the other logistics of am i going to have a hookup how often am i going to have to dump we'll have city water we'll have to fill up our tanks all that stuff comes to play if you're staying somewhere for a long period of time but that's a great way to overcome that next up on our list is health and wellness it is very very difficult to stay healthy on the road Part of wanting an RV instead of traveling by suitcase or backpack like we were thinking of doing years ago is we wanted to have our own space. Lindsay has Crohn's disease, so we definitely wanted to have our own bathroom, but we also wanted to be able to cook our own meals. It's really hard to stay healthy on the road. RV makes that possible because we can cook our own meals. We can shop healthy. We can store that food in a refrigerator and freezer. We can freshly prepare it on the stove and the grill, but really staying healthy and well is a challenge on the road. And it was especially hard in the truck camper in such a small space uh, being able to work out. A lot of times the weather doesn't cooperate and uh, we'd have to be inside in our tiny little camper and there really wasn't any room at all to do any kind of exercises inside. Now that we have a bigger RV. Which was part of the decision for getting the bigger RV. If we can't be outside, we can still do stuff inside here. Yeah, we do. The way we designed our remodel, and we'll be, of course, sharing that with you down the road, is we have a big space that's actually big enough for me to lay on the floor, stretch, do push-ups, crunches. We've got some, some small weights we're going to be taking with us. Small weights we've actually always took with us from day one, but used maybe one time. Yeah, no. So we used to rely on, you know, parking at a place and maybe there's a picnic table there and I'd go sit up on the picnic table and do some crunches. Yes, we took yoga mats along and we could throw those on the ground. But as Lindsay pointed out, sometimes you're camping in an alpaca farm in Montana and there's alpaca poop all over the ground. So definitely not going to be doing push-ups with alpaca poop in my face. Definitely not going to lay out this mat on alpaca poop. Um, but those are kind of the, the, the fun things of living on the road, but also the challenge that comes with that is that you know, sometimes we woke up like in upstate New York, it was gorgeous, we stayed outside of the Finger Lakes and we had a beautiful campsite and there were 20 miles of trails right there. Yeah, and literally, that's what we did. literally from the campsite, mm -hmm. we could walk off and go hike and do, but other times we woke up in Cracker Barrel parking lots in Virginia and said, well, there's no hiking to be done here yeah. because there's no hiking to be done in a Cracker Barrel parking lot or a Walmart parking lot. So that's definitely a challenge staying healthy and well it's something that I'm going to take to heart specifically on this next leg of the journey um, because I got fat and it's not healthy. So the next thing on our list is our dogs. Love them. We love them love so them. much. They are like children. They're like our children to us. And we love having them, but sometimes it can be pretty challenging, you know, finding places that are dog friendly, you know, where we can take them hiking with us. A lot of national parks, you can't do that. You can't take the dogs with you at all. Did you say so. like our children or are <laughs> yes, our children? They are our children. <laughs> okay, does that mean that you're with the milkman? Because he doesn't look very much like me. No. <laughs> say hi, Huck. We're talking about you now. He smells like dead animal. No, nope. did he roll in something? Sounds, smells like it. In the back. There's a challenge. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. So, we love our dogs. You probably, you may have dogs. You may be thinking, well, if I have dogs, can I really live the RV lifestyle? The answer is yes. But as Lindsay's pointed out, there's just definitely challenges associated with it. Dogs don't have the freedom that we have. Like we can go eight hours without having, you know, driving without having to get out and do more than stretch our legs. But dogs need to get out and run and they need to do more than just stop at a rest stop, go pee and then get back in the car. Mm -hmm. We can suck it up and do that. But dogs don't know what is going on. And so, especially our dogs or cattle dogs, they're high energy, high drive. It's a challenge to keep them motivated and healthy and fit on the road as well. And also hot weather and having to leave them in the RV and trying to figure out how to keep the RV cool with them, you know, that can be, that's a major challenge yeah. as well. Just little errands like grocery shopping. Um, but then of course, national parks where they're not allowed in most national parks, they're not allowed off the pavement, which is nothing to see or do. Mm -hmm. um, you can't take them hiking thanks to you know a lot of different reasons for that. We can't take them hiking and we can't leave them in the camper very long depending on weather of course. But we never risk that with our dogs. So if there's any chance that it's going to be too hot for them, we're like well looks like we're going to have to avoid that hike. And there's really only a couple hikes we've done in national parks because we don't leave our dogs yeah. in a place where it's not safe for them. 
where the temperatures could rise. That's just to say our dogs are our number one priority. I mean, babe, you're my number one <laughs> priority, but our dogs are definitely They're our definitely collective there. number one priority. And so traveling with dogs can definitely be a challenge, but it is possible. And we have a post on that if you're looking for more tips and tricks on traveling with dogs. The next challenge, of course, is travel finances. The last video I did, which is popping up now, if you haven't seen it, talks about how we live frugally on the road. Just a basic overview. But even as we try to live frugally, we have things like gas prices going through the freaking roof right now. So how do you budget to drive 3,000 miles in a period of a month or two when gas prices are ridiculously expensive? Uh, the answer is you have to figure out if it's worth it to you to do or not. And so that's what we're doing right now. Um, there's other expenses on the road where every place we go, I would love, you'll see I love food. I would love to be able to go to a restaurant every town we visit. Buffalo, we're getting buffalo wings. Kansas City, we're getting barbecue. Um, you know, Southwest and New Mexico, we're going to be eating delicious Mexican, Mexican food. food and Southwest mm -hmm. cuisine. It'd be great to go out and not only is that not healthy for us to do, as we just talked about, but also it would break our bank because we don't travel with a big, huge budget. If you do, great, fantastic. But for us, we're trying to bootstrap a business on the road to be able to continue to afford to travel full-time in our RV. And so every penny saved is literally a penny earned for us. That being said, we do have to make compromises because there's certain things you have to see and do when you're traveling. For example, in Baja, Mexico, there's no way we're gonna go to a whale shark uh, area that's known and always has whale sharks and not go swimming with whale sharks. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're gonna go on the Pacific coast of Baja where whales are migrating and not get in a, a ponga and go out and see the whales. See the whales. Yeah. Like, there's no way we're not going to do that kind of stuff. But when it comes to spending $200 on a halibut fishing trip in Alaska, we have to take a pass on that. And God granted us an awesome way around that. Experience, yeah. um, but that is a big thing with our budget is that there's so much that we would see and do if it was an unlimited budget. You guys know that any place you live, unlimited budget, go off, have fun. But in an RV, it's a little different for us, especially now that gas prices are going to be eating into some of our other uh, experiences. So we're constantly trying to find ways to earn money through our business. We're constantly trying to find ways. We're keeping an open mind to doing work as we travel. But as you know, we've often come off the road because of breakdowns and because we've been running out of money. And so we've had to re-up. And that's always a challenge with living full-time on the road is that travel finance component. And the next thing on our list are is breakdowns and the anxiety about breaking down. Did you say anxiety? Yeah. That makes me anxious right now, just saying that word. And you said breakdown, which makes me double anxious. And we've had quite a few breakdowns. We can't show we, all the videos. Yeah, I think they, we have so many. There's a limit to how many pop-ups uh, we can send your way. But you do know yeah. we've had quite a few breakdowns. Tires, brakes, suspension, engine. I mean, you name it. <laughs> As the driver of the previous 50,000 miles in Rocket all across the North American continent, I was constantly keeping check of the gauges, I was constantly checking the fluids, constantly doing a physical assessment of the entire outside of the vehicle, doing little things like that to alleviate the anxiety that could happen with a breakdown. Maintenance is key. Preventative maintenance and maintenance in general, just making sure that you're getting your tires rotated and balanced every time that happens. Ask them to look at the tires, make sure there's no nails or other, other objects that could be in them changing the fluids on a regular basis. So doing all kinds of preventative maintenance is a way of overcoming that anxiety. Lindsay, question for you. Million dollar question. Can you predict when you're gonna break down? No. So you can't predict it, which means not it not. may or may not happen. And we try to live in a world where we forget that we're gonna break down somewhere, but the reality is all good things come to an end at some point. So you can't pick where you're gonna break down. You can't pick what's gonna break down can't pick the expense of the breakdown but one thing we do is we travel with good sam roadside assistance and that gives us some uh some peace about knowing if we do break down we give them a call they come out if they have to tow us we can get towed if it's uh you know change helping with fluids or little small things here or there so that insurance also helps alleviate which is what insurance is for it takes a little bit of anxiety away keeping up with your preventative maintenance those are things that really help out in the long run when it comes to the challenge of a breakdown. All right, the last challenge is really, it's my personal challenge and it's what I call beer, barbecue, and bacon. 
And what that means is as a full-time RVer, I hate the smell of bacon. I hate watching people drink beer around a campfire. Why do I hate that? Because we can't afford to do that every day. But when you're on the road full time, you know, you see those people that are doing their weekend trips or their family vacations in the summer and you're happy for them. And genuinely, I am happy. I love, I love, I love seeing young kids and their families out camping. It makes me happy. But when I smell that bacon in the morning, I'm like, dang, that's not fair because we can't mm -hmm. cook bacon every morning. We do. Lindsay's great with bacon. She cooks it from time to time. And we have at times enjoyed delicious adult beverages in beautiful places. And we have paid exorbitant prices for wood to have a campfire. But typically speaking, wood's about a dollar per little log. And so getting a bundle for five, six dollars that lasts you an hour, if that, around the fire, is just something that we don't afford Important. as full-time RVers. If you're not full-time, obviously you're probably not watching this video, but if you're not <laughs> full-time, have a great time with your beer, barbecue, and bacon. Um, but just know that as a full-time RVer, you're going to have to make some choices that are different than the people around you. And that's a big lesson in life that I learned, fortunately, when I was a young adult, is that I can't see and do everything that everybody else does. I have to figure out who I am and what I want and live my life in that way. So hopefully this can be an encouragement for you to take a look at your life on the road and say, what is it that I really want to accomplish and achieve so that you can set your course in that direction? You know, for us, we started out wanting to serve people and volunteer, and we still do that. So that changes the direction of um, not being as selfish in traveling. We love making friends. So if somebody wants to flag us down and have a conversation, we end up talking the entire day. Mm -hmm. And we end up becoming friends and going in maybe in a different direction because we're full time and we can do that. Um, whereas we would otherwise just chop the conversation short and say, nope, we're off. We're going to go do this. We've only got so much time. We're going to go do this. We're going to go do this. So for us, our purpose allows us to live differently. If your purpose is to have beer, barbecue, and bacon in the most beautiful places in North America, by all means, go do it. We can give you lists of beautiful places to have each of those in your experience. And again, we've shared that we've done that in the past. We've had all that experience ourselves. We just have to be more selective about when we're going to have the beer, barbecue, and the bacon. So that was our list of our challenges of full-time living on the road. You didn't say short, because that wasn't a short list. <laughs> was, I mean, it was under 10 things. Yeah. So kind of short. There's definitely more challenges full-time RV living, but we want to help encourage you to pursue the abundant life on the road. And that life will come with challenges seen and not seen. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you learned something, if you have something positive to say, leave us a comment. Make sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Share our story and information with people who in your life you think would value the kind of information that we have. We appreciate you guys being a part of our journey and we look forward to sharing our next step with you shortly.